this might be the best celebrity skincare line ever. Is this just a cash grab or is this what we have been hoping for? Winnie Harlow has launched a skincare line that isn't just skincare, it's sunscreen. And when I tried to dig into who this company was created by or who it was funded by, looks like it's privately held. And from what I can tell, looks like the team has done this from scratch themselves. I am so excited because first off sunscreen and secondly, Winnie Harlow. And Winnie Harlow, you probably recognize her, but do you know who she really is? She's not just a model with vitiligo, but she's an advocate for anti-bullying because of what she's gone through. And she also works to help save the bees. Vitiligo is a depigmenting disorder and it's characterized by these patches on the skin that sometimes change. It's commonly referred to as an autoimmune disorder and it's basically where the body, it attacks certain cells within the skin, the ones that produce pigment because it sees them as like a virus or a disease and it tries to get rid of them. But unfortunately, this can cause the skin to change color in ever-changing patterns in different areas of the body. It's been seen quite a bit in Indian populations, but any skin tone, race, nationality, or ethnicity can get it. And Winnie Harlow is specifically Caribbean and Canadian. Now, Winnie Harlow was born with this, and when she was growing up, her parents and her family always treated her as normal. They never said anything bad about her skin. But it wasn't until she was in about the third grade that she had friends that just stopped hanging out with her. And she didn't understand why. When she asked them, they specifically said it was because their parents didn't want those kids to catch her skin disorder or to have it be contagious. And for this poor young girl, can you imagine how damaging that must have been to not fully understand your own condition or your own skin and to be told that you know you're this walking infection or disease fun fact my nickname in school was actually the walking disease the infection and um, pizza face and those were very difficult for me because I had a similar experience with a kid in a grocery store who grabbed his mom's arm and he was like mom what's wrong with that girl's face when I had acne now acne is very different than vitiligo but I love that Winnie Harlow decided not to let this shape her when she grew up she started speaking about the bullying that she received and how she actually put some of that bullying back on other people until she realized that this was wrong and not who she was. And that's when she realized that her skin was not this horrible thing she needed to be ashamed of, but she found beauty in it. And she said, this makes me unique and gorgeous. And I don't have to let someone else dictate my beauty based on their societal standards. Winnie Harlow specifically said that her vitiligo is not the problem. It was the bullying. And she's an anti-bullying advocate because of that. And her entire career started because she was doing small photo shoots and a photographer that she was working with literally said, keep this up, keep doing this, you can go places. But Winnie, like with her skin, she never thought that she could be a model. She ended up doing many things from America's Next Top Model to Vogue to Victoria's Secret, but now she is launching a skincare line and it's not just any skincare line, it's all sunscreen. You know these celebrity cash grabs that normally come out here and they're like, buy my overly fragranced, Pepto-Bismol, absolutely wonderful, you know, DNA skincare and spend all your money on it. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired and sick of that and my pores are a little bit tired and fatigued and overdone with it as well. And most celebrity skincare lines do feel like a cash grab to me because I see these celebrities who don't really know what's in skincare. I've never heard them speak about skincare before and now they're slapping their name on a pre-made product that they're rebranding and trying to sell for lots of money. Normally, those skincare lines don't have sunscreen. Oh my god. We know that SPF is your BFF. And Winnie Harlow did not just launch one, not even two, but three, and potentially another one to come, sunscreens. This is phenomenal, and it's part of K-skincare. Now, I will say, when I first read K-skincare on Instagram, I thought it said gay skincare. <laughs> like, that is just what I saw, and apparently I was not the only one because the comments did agree. But this K-skincare pays homage and tribute to her Caribbean upbringing. And I remember vividly reading books with my mom as a child, and the K was one of my favorite ones, and I guess I forgot it was a word. I don't know. It's not a word I use in regular English lexicon vocabulary, but I think it's a beautiful name. She didn't just slap her name like Winnie Harlow skincare line one, two, three on it. And it really does speak to being out in the islands, protecting yourself from the sun, but still embracing your skin and wearing it exactly the way you want and having a great time while you do it. Also, yes, it is vegan, cruelty free, and it's sustainable. A lot of the packages are made with post-consumer recycled materials. And this was phenomenal. And I thought to myself, it looks a little too good to be true. So, what did I do? <laughs> a little digging. And I will say, I had a hard time digging some of this stuff up. The first thing that I saw was that many of the social accounts for K-Skin, such as Instagram or such as Twitter, were actually created in September of 2020. So this line has been around for a while and it was probably, you know, working behind the scenes even before that. But something else I tried to look up was a trademark or a copyright. Normally, if you own a brand, you will actually have that name trademarked. And I looked up K-Skin and at least from the US 
USPTO, I found nothing. I did find K Soul, which means K Sun, and it did specifically say that this was owned by a Delaware company in San Diego, and they also had other things such as lip balms, sunscreens, sunscreen oils, and basically all of the things that Winnie Harlow's line was doing. But it was a little bit tricky to track down, and I actually don't know if these two things are definitively connected because I'm just working with outside information. Now, of course, I got curious if I decided to dig a little bit deeper, and I wanted to see who was actually working at this company. You know, when celebrities try to work on skincare, it's not uncommon for a celebrity to partner with a large beauty conglomerate and slap their name on something. For instance, Kylie Skin worked with Seed and <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> not confirmed, but allegedly, <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> ColourPop, and used some of those labs to create her products. Someone like Addison Rae partnered with Ipsy and other companies to put her name on some cosmetics. And even Fenty Skin or Kat Von D partnered up with a company like Kendo to basically create their custom product, but to have it under one of these large conglomerates. And that's normally what happens. Normally there is a parent company that owns or controls all of what's going on. And I tried to look into this and I found a skin company. But what was shocking is that when I found some of the people who were working at the company and some of the background as to who was there, I was pleasantly surprised and actually shocked at what I found. So first and foremost, it actually looks like this company stands on its own. It is privately held, doesn't look like it's owned by some big conglomerate, and everyone that works there seems to come from different backgrounds. Normally, when you have one of these big parent companies creating a celebrity skincare line, they'll create multiple, and you'll actually see the same employees at those multiple companies because they're all owned by the main one who's kind of doing the work and has, you know, the team and the supply chain and the employees to facilitate that. But what I noticed is that the people who seem to work at K skin or be a part of that team. They all came from beauty background experiences, so they all had work in either beauty brands or skincare or makeup, but they all came from different companies. And it looks like they're coming together for the first time to work on this. And it sounds like they actually have some really good expertise. This K Soul company was owned by Skin and & Sun, and I thought to myself, okay, I can just kind of look at the website and maybe I can see their address, their location, anything like that. It was difficult to find, and even when you email them, they don't have an address or like a company LLC or another name listed. And this actually makes me think that this was a very small operation. Now, when it comes to sunscreens, we also know that FDA and regulation takes a ton of time to push through. If you wanna make a sunscreen from scratch, instead of just slapping your name onto something, you literally have to go in and create that formula, test it, make sure it's stable, make sure that you actually test it on skin and then get that approved by the FDA. And you know how long that takes? One to two years. Almost like something that was created in 2019 or 2020 and launched in 2022. For this, among other reasons, I have a lot of sneaking suspicions that this was done by scratch by this team. And even when looking at some of the ingredients in the formulations, I recommend a few clusters of ingredients that could point to a patented or a pre-blended mix, but I don't see that this is a cut and paste of anything else on the market. This looks like a unique formula, and this actually makes me think and hope that maybe this was actually done with hard work, blood, sweat, tears, and extra expertise and that someone who actually cares about skincare bothered to make this. And even when you look at kind of Winnie's story and how she, as one of the founders, is kind of speaking about this, she specifically said that she got sunburned once and that that sunburn started to peel and it changed the shape and the pattern of her vitiligo. And ever since she was young, she always knew that sunscreen was important. But especially after this moment, she said, I need something that works for my skin color, not just my one skin color, but my multiple skin colors that are ever changing and for all other skin tones out there. Again, a lot of sunscreens, especially the mineral ones, they tend to be pasty. They tend to flash back white or gray or purple. And all skin needs protection. But for people who have black or ebony skin, it can be really hard to find a formula that works well for you, that feels good, that looks great, and that doesn't flash back in those weird purple or gray colors. And Winnie saw this and apparently decided to work on it and now has this brand. Now, I don't know if Winnie has been a part of this since the very beginning. Like, has she always known about this since the very beginning of 2019, 2020? Did she come in later? I don't have all those answers, but from what I can tell just as an outsider, this looks like someone actually did the work. This is not just a copy paste. This is not just a, hey, can I see your homework? This looks like someone who cared and decided to do the work themselves to make something that honestly, this industry really needs. All of this leads me to believe that this celebrity skincare line might not be a cash grab. And even if you take the gorgeous, talented, influential, 
influential, eco-friendly, anti-bullying person that Winnie Harlow is out of the picture, this still looks like a fantastic line. And then you put her on top and you're like, oh my God, someone who actually has a story that relates to their skin and cares about skin and actually has an experience with sunscreens and with, you know, a sunburn that caused her to do this. I hope it's not marketing bullshit. I hope it's real, but oh, am I buying into it? Absolutely. Now I have a couple friends a couple people in the industry. I live in the Silicon Valley and I know a couple companies who know a couple things. And there are things within the Silicon Valley and within the world called incubators. They could be incubators or accelerators. Both are different. Think of them as like the grown up version of a hackathon. A hackathon is where people get together and brainstorm an idea, almost like a seminar. Or something like an accelerator is where someone can actually get money or get funding for their brands or products and help take their product to market or take their product to the next level. Kind of like Shark Tank in real life, almost in Away. And you can find different investors to work with and you can find different people who have expertise in an area that maybe you don't to get your company or business off the ground. Well, incubators, accelerators, and these guidance companies are nothing new in the beauty space. And what's interesting is that some of the people who work very high up at K-Skin happen to be connected to a very interesting company. This company is called 100.co and they specifically say that their team has some of the most accomplished entrepreneurs in the technology and consumer product spaces. They created 100CO, an AI-powered consumer brand group with a mission to disrupt the consumer packaged goods market with purpose-driven products co-created with the world's most influential founders. Now, when you read that, you start thinking to yourself, hmm, influential founder, expertise in people who actually care, people who care about entrepreneurship and stories and making something really cool together. I see, I see what is happening. Now, I want to say that this is not confirmed that 100CO is in any way related. This is all speculative and me asking around and doing some digging. And again, I don't know what lab they used. I don't know if these are custom formulas or if these have partial patents that are licensed from some other company. And I know that's all like big business talk, but basically this looks like it was done from scratch. And I am shocked and surprised. You know what I did? I purchased some stuff. And you know what else I did? I purchased multiple things. And then when I looked at my order, it only contained one product. And I was like, did I press the wrong button or did they sell out? Like I'm a little confused. When we look at some of the products in this line, up. The first one is the one that I want the most and that it's not available. It is the Isle Body Oil SPF 30. This actually looks like a sunscreen body oil. The only sunscreen body oil that I know and can really recommend is the one from Supergoop. I know that Kylie Skin also has an interesting sunscreen oil that is not terrible. And I think hers is less expensive than the Supergoop. But this for $32 is what I've been waiting for. This specifically says it has a blend of nutrient rich oils, including squalene, which we've spoken about in this video right here. It has argan oil, grapeseed, coconut, meadow foam. And it basically says that it protects the skin moisture barrier, which as oils, it absolutely would. They say it provides hydration with UVA and UVB protection. And then although it does have a warm vanilla amber fragrance, they're claiming that it is synthetic fragrance free. Now they're also saying that it's benzene free. And if we remember the um, benzene sunscreen debacle, yeah, that was shown and proven to be like not an issue. But of course the industry made it one. I see them using all the claims. They've got the dermatologist tested. They got the vegan, the benzene free, the silicone free safe for sensitive skin. Like they did their due diligence. The problem is it's not available yet. I want to get my hands on this so bad. And so far I have not been able to. Now it does have alcohol. So I wonder why that's okay for super sensitive skin. I understand that with an oil and alcohol that would help it set up on the skin. That's something I might be a little bit concerned about. They also have avocado in here, which I wish they called out. They also have coffee, which I think is amazing. But on the flip side, they also have balsam of Peru and bergamot oil and bitter orange oil, all three of which can cause major skin sensitivity. Balsam Peru oil specifically has been known to cause a ton of irritation. So I don't know how they're saying that this is safe for sensitive skin, but I see it and I know that I do want to put this on my skin. I want to compare this to the super goop. Now there's also the Isle Glow Face Lotion SPF 45. And I love that this is an SPF 45. And they specifically say that it is a silicone free day glow boosting sunscreen. This has a nude pearl blend. Okay. I don't know what that is, but I am so ready for it. And apparently it applies quickly and seamlessly on all skin tones without leaving a white cast or a silver cast. It has vitamins, antioxidants, like 
niacinamide and sea moss. Product is silky smooth. And when we actually look at the ingredients, they back it up. This is an organic slash chemical sunscreen. So I would be a little bit nervous about this burning my eyes or any open blemishes. But I also recognize that this isn't necessarily made for acne prone skin. This is made to not flash back. And based on those actives, I mean, it looks like it wouldn't. The most interesting ingredients here include apple, watermelon, and lentil. The antioxidants to the next level, they're not lying. And yes, it has niacinamide, but it also has ferulic acid. Like whoever created this literally knows what the hell they're doing. Like this is a great ingredient list. This is hard to work with too, because niacinamide tends to kind of pill up. I want to see how this goes on the skin. I am so excited. But again, we do have some of those oils like bergamot and balsam of Peru that I want to make sure would be safe for sensitive skin. I don't know if I would go as far to call it sensitive skin safe. And just because it's dermatologist tested, again, you could be a dermatologist. You could look at something, you could test it, you'd be like, this sucks, bye. Did I break you? I broke glass. Oops. Hey, Cassandra, maybe don't throw things. Well, a derm can throw something and break a window because it sucks, but you can still say that it was dermatologist tested, so just be aware of that. This I am also extremely excited by, but that's not all because they also have a universal mineral face lotion SPF 35 for 34 doll hairs. 34 of, of these. Silicone free, non nano mineral face SPF. I am so excited about this. It has, again, sea moss, skin loving actives like squalane and our exclusive plant-based antioxidant yellow tint that blends in seamlessly on all skin tones for a healthy hydrated finish. No more white cast. Now this makes me nervous and if you see the pictures it looks very pretty. It looks like it is a, a nice color and they specifically say that it has a hydrating nectar, has squalane, sea moss, you know this antioxidant complex or whatever anyone says. All skin tones or all skin types I get a little suspicious because I'm sorry. If something fits my seven-year-old niece, it is definitely not going to fit my six-foot-two uncle, okay? Okay, one size does not fit all. Tell that to my size 10 and a half feet. Literally, the socks that say one size fits all, it doesn't, okay? Okay, now I understand this is not a pair of socks. This is not clothing. This is skincare, but is this really going to blend into all skin types if it has a tint? Does anyone remember that Alme foundation? It would like blend to match your skin tone and instead of blending to match your skin tone, it like didn't work at all on anyone ever. I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I'm very excited about this and I do want to try it. And again, this is why I'm shocked that Winnie Harlow is a celebrity who created a skincare line that is this good because I don't normally think of celebrities really understanding cosmetic chemistry or really doing due diligence behind a lot of things, but they literally have clinical results. I don't know how rigorous this testing was, but overall they said 100% of users had a 40% increase in skin's moisture level in just one hour. This could be something where they literally give people a piece of paper and it has, you know, leading questions and they say, here, fill this out, check the box. Did you feel more hydrated? It could be that bad, hoping it's a little bit better, but they do at least have clinical tests and that's a lot more than many other brands can say. Specifically, they say that this formula is proven to reduce pollution induced free radicals by 85% and 77% of blue light induced free radicals, which again, blue light is a thing from the sun, AKA visible light, but we don't have to be worried about our screens, which helps me, you know, scroll in confidence as I go through Winnie Harlow's Instagram pictures. <laughs> they also say that this one is ophthalmologist tested for use around the eyes, not in the eyes, but around the eyes. And overall, I am so literally thrilled about this. This one is also a mineral sunscreen, which is fantastic. I was saying when Fenty Skin launched their line that like, I want a mineral sunscreen that works on each skin tone. Like I want something like a tattoo bomb. Like that's what I wanted from Riri and Fenty Skin. And I feel like Winnie Harlow heard the call and is like delivering. I'm really hoping that this actually works on all skin tones. The ingredients do have caprylic triglyceride that we normally see in great moisturizers along with jojoba esters. Like these are all things that I love. And then we've got this lentil and this watermelon. I have a feeling that that and maybe something along this apple line is their, you know, proprietary blend. I want to know if this is just for them or if this is something that they've purchased and licensed from someone else. If we go back to our cake baking analogy, did they go grind the flour themselves? Did they go get the cocoa and smash up the cocoa beans and make the chocolate? Or did they go get the Betty Crocker cake mix and just, you know, put it in a pan? 
pan and put in water and eggs and like try to sell it at a bake sale, right? Actually looks like they're doing this from scratch, but are they using any of those pre-blended ingredients? I don't know, but I want to know. They also have an SPF lip balm. I don't know, I, I need to wear more SPF lip balms. I have one from Jane Iredale that I really love, so I feel like I'm good, but I also have a lot of sunscreens that I love that I feel like I'm good and I still wanna buy this face sunscreen. I don't know, I'm more excited about the face stuff than the lip stuff, but if you want me to test it and try it, I absolutely will. And I have already bought it. I already have this coming to me in the mail. I cannot wait to put this on my face. I wanna see how it pills up in comparison to the Glow Recipe niacinamide because we're seeing more and more sunscreens have niacinamide in them. Elta MD also has a niacinamide sunscreen that tends to ball up. I'm gonna put them to the test. So make sure to reapply your SPF beautiful inside and out. And I cannot wait to see you when I get these products in my hands. <laughs> Always be beautiful both inside and out. And if you hit subscribe, then I'll see you in the next video when my package arrives. Oh, I am so excited for this. This truly might be the first celebrity skincare line that is not a cash grab. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.